When I discovered slide film, it quickly became my favourite type of film to shoot. And for me, the high cost of the film is justified by its extremely high quality. Processing, on the other hand, is a completely different story. At €9.50 a roll and a seven day wait, it's just ludicrous. So I took matters into my own hands, bought the chemistry, and learned how to process it myself. Before we start processing our E6 slide film, there's two things I want to point out. One, learn black and white film developing first, mostly because it uses all of the same equipment, it's much simpler to do, and it's also much cheaper. If you make a mistake, you're not ruining a 20 euro roll of film, you're ruining a five euro roll of film. So it's not as bad. And secondly, when it comes to E6 processing, there's one thing you should always do, and that is to or T F M. Read the freaking manual. This is the instructions to come in the box. Make sure to read them. It contains everything you need, including the mixing concentrations for different types of solutions, your processing times, depending on how many rolls you've run, how to push and pull process, and also a really good troubleshooting guide for issues and problems if your slides turn out color shifted. This will tell you how to fix them. So once again, read the freaking manual first. And with that said, let's get processing. In order to mix a 500 ml batch of chemistry, we're going to need at least one, but preferably two 500 ml graduate cylinders, one small measuring cylinder, as well as four storage bottles. I find that amber glass storage bottles work really well. In order to make a 500 ml solution of first developer, we are going to measure out 100 ml of concentrate in our smaller cylinder and then we're going to make it up in the bigger cylinder to 500 ml using tap water. One thing you should do when you're making up the solution is to transfer the tap water to your small measuring cylinder first and then into the large cylinder. This will transfer any leftover chemistry residue in the measuring cylinder to the final solution. Now we're just going to pour our finished solution into our storage bottle and invert it a few times to make sure that it's properly mixed. After mixing up any of the chemicals, make sure to wash everything up really well because if you cross contaminate any of this stuff, it will destroy the chemistry. The color developer comes in two parts and in order to mix this, we have to use 100 ml from each part. So we pour 100 ml from part A into the big cylinder, pour across some washings, then we measure out 100 ml of part B, pour it into the bigger cylinder, pour across some washings, and then we fill it up to 500 ml when mixed correctly, the color developer will take on a nice deep blue. And now with the color developer mixed, we just pour it into our storage bottle and set it aside. Mixing the blicks is the same as the color developer. It's a two part solution, 100 ml of each part into the final solution. One thing to note about the blicks is that it's a bleaching fixed solution and it contains bleach. The bleach will stain anything it touches, particularly clothes. So make sure you're ready with a rag to wipe up any drops or spills. The last solution to make up is our stabilizer. And this is the same as the first developer. It's a hundred mil of concentrate made up to 500 mils and poured into a bottle ready to go. To maintain the developing temperature, we set up a water bath. I'm also going to set up a container for wash water. And finally, I'll have a container for waste water. In order to heat and regulate the temperature in the water bath, we're going to use a sous vide machine, sometimes called an immersion circulator, and this will allow us to maintain our temperature accurately without having to put in any extra effort, which is nice. Once the water bath's set up, all we need to do is put the chemistry in there and wait for it to heat up to 38 degrees Celsius. I have this grill here which keeps them rised up out of the water to keep the labels from getting wet because my sous vide machine requires fairly deep water to work properly. To monitor the temperature inside the bottles, I'm using this thermometer I found in IKEA and it does a great job. Now while that is all heating up, let's go load our film into the developing tank. To load our film, we're working with 120. We have a reel, we've expanded it to 120. And separate the film, 
and then unroll it carefully. And I like to let it roll up like this underneath when I feel the film edge, I let it roll up, and then I can just separate out the film really easily by just pulling it. I should just unroll nice and easy. When you unroll your 120 film, you will get to the tape. So all you need to do is separate the tape by tearing it. And find the backing paper, move that aside, and then we have our film. Now we need to find the tape end of the film and detach the film from the tape and just stick that somewhere where it won't annoy us. Roll up our film, have it ready to go, find the edge, get my reel. And then I just sort of bring it in here. What I do is I find these lips and then I lower the film kind of down and pull it across. Pull it smoothly through the bearings. Once it's in a little bit, turn it and then begin ratcheting. When you're ratcheting, make sure to keep this covered to keep the fur from popping. Once it's on, do a few rotates. Now the film is loaded on the reel. Take your center piece. Put them together, down into the tank, make sure it's good and tight. Lock our tank, Grab the sealing lid, and done. The film is now loaded inside the tank, ready to go. Once the film has been loaded and the chemistry has reached the correct temperature, we do need to heat our wash water because if we use cold wash water, it will cool the tank and the film down and fiddle with the temperatures too much. So to do that, I just stick the sous vide machine in a tank of wash water and bring it up to temp as well. So with our chemistry and wash water up to temp, the film is loaded in our tank. We're finally developing our film. Our first step is the preheat and pre-soak step. So we just fill our tank up with wash water and then we'll put the tank inside our water bath to keep the temperature constant and we'll leave it there for five minutes. After the five minutes is up, we'll just take our tank out of the water bath and then we'll empty out the wash water. And the wash water will come out different colors depending on the film. So Provia produces a violet kind of color. Ectochrome will have a very deep green and it just looks awesome. So after the pre-wash comes the first developer, we're just gonna pour it straight into the tank. And when we're finished pouring this, we'll start our timer for six minutes. I will then agitate the tank using the little stirring stick for about a minute. And once the minute is up, I move the tank into the water bath to control the temperature. And I will agitate every minute for 10 seconds while the tank is in the water bath. When I have about 30 seconds left on the clock, I'll take the tank out of the water bath and then I will pour the first developer back into the bottle it came from for reuse. So now we move on to the first wash and for this I use a modified Ilford wash where I fill the tank, invert it five times, dump it, fill it again, invert five times, dump, fill, invert 10 times, dump, fill, invert 20 times and then dump it. I find that this method works really well to wash the film quickly and prevent any of the first developer getting into the color developer which can easily ruin the color developer. At this point, after a washing, the film is inert, which means there's no chemical reactions happening on the film. So if you need to take a few minutes to do something, this is the right moment to do it. I tend to use this time to clean the funnels and any stirring sticks or stuff that have been used in the first developer to prevent it cross-contaminating into the next chemical step. Next up is the color developer step. So we're going to pour it into the tank. When we're finished pouring, we'll start our timer for six minutes this time. I will agitate the tank for the first minute and then I'll put the tank in the water bath and agitate for 10 seconds every minute, exactly the same as the first developer. Once again, 30 seconds before the timer finishes, we'll take the tank out of the water bath, pour it back into the color developer bottle and then we proceed to do our second washing phase. This washing phase is exactly the same as the first one, five inversions, five inversions, 10 inversions, 20 inversions, dumping the water in between each one. So now we're moving on to the Blick step and for this step, we're just gonna pour it in and then when we're finished pouring, we'll start our timer for six minutes again. Agitate for one minute and then move it into the water bath where I will agitate it for 10 seconds every minute. Once again, 30 seconds before the end, we'll take it out of the water bath, pour it back into the bottle so we can move on to our final wash phase. For the final wash, I will do two sets of five inversions, two sets of 10 and two sets of 20 to make sure the film is good and washed before we move on to the stabilizer. 
So we'll pour in the stabilizer and we're going to agitate it continuously for one minute. The nice thing about the stabilizer is that you don't need to heat this chemical. This can be done at room temperature. So we don't actually have to put this into the water bath at all. So after the minute's up, we're just going to pour this back into the bottle for reuse later. At this point, your film is ready. So you can open your tank. I like to take a piece of film off the reel to check the slides are okay. And then I will pull the film out in a dust free area. Generally, I use a shower, run a squeegee down it a couple of times, and then I will hang it up to dry. One thing to be aware of is that while the film is wet, the colors might not look exactly right. This is normal. As the film dries, the colors will shift back into place. And on a side note, if you're shooting ectochrome, sometimes the ectochrome will have like a yellow goo kind of layer on the back. Just ignore it, it gets reabsorbed back into the emulsion and it will be fine. Just hang it up and let it to dry. Once the film is dry, all we need to do is cut it up, scan it and store it in some filing sheets. And then marvel at the beauty of slide film. And that's it for this video guys. And I'll see you next time. And now that our film is dry, all we need to do is struggle to pick it up off the light table. <laughs>